This is the summary how I started doing the electronics for this project. Since I've never created a microcontroller circuit before, I've started with the common Hello World project like blinking LED. Then I just extended this by dimming the LED with some pulse width modulation. The next step was to address the 7 segment display as you can see here. This worked quite straightforward. Connecting the Hull effect sensor isn't that difficult. I had just to connect the 5 volts ground and to the ADC from the microcontroller. As you can see I was able to measure the magnetic strength and display is on the 7 segment display. I extended the display by two more digits. I didn't use any multiplexer for the display since I had enough pins. A few days later I had already the media interface running. As you can see I am using this media interface to USB converter. This is my first success sending MIDI messages by pressing this button. From zero to this point it took me like six days. After this I was ready to build the device mechanics. I bought some slats and cut them to the right length I thought at this time would be. Sanded the edges, drilled the steps of the shorter keys together and sanded them again to get smooth edges. The base of the device is about 80 by 30 cm. I drilled a slat to the front and a thicker bar to the back and marked where the pedals would be. To hold the pedals horizontally in place, I had to use some spaces in between. I took an aluminum pipe and cut it in pieces, smoothing the edges and using dowels to mount them to the base. Using this kind of springs turned out to not be the best choice, but I will get to the flaws in another separate part. I have mounted the springs using some mounting band strips and some washers. I was really proud I came up with this technique at this time. fix the pedals I used separate hinges. They are kind of wiggly and noisy, so this turned out to be an expensive and bad choice. The next time I will just use a thick long rod for all pedals at once. To fix the spacers and keep the pedals from bouncing I had to use another sled on top. I have decided to glue the spacers to the top, so I am able to disassemble the device anytime easily. To lower the bouncing noise I had to add some felt stoppers. As a counterpart to the springs I screwed some big washers to the bottom of the pedals. I also have mounted the magnets considering the polarity and sufficient distance to the metal parts at this time. The interference between the pedals is marginal and if needed can be subtracted in software. To give the device a bit more stability I added some feet to the sides. This is the first mechanical test. If you haven't noticed, I have shortened the long keys later. I have used another sled for the sensor array. To get the exact position for the sensors, I have elevated the sled, charred the screws of the magnets and pressed down the pedals. To mount the sensors to the sled, I came up with the idea just to clamp them with a plastic ribbon which I took from this corner piece here. I also took the sled with the points on it as a measure to cut the ribbon cable for the sensors. Look at this clumsy approach to solder using a soldering pistol. It worked for me! I used tape to insulate the sensor pins before I clamped them to the sled using the plastic ribbon. At this time I also developed my secret technique using hot glue to insulate connectors. 
After the hot glue is cooled down, I use the X-Acto knife to cut off any excess. In the center you can see my first approach of the multiplexer cascade. It worked, even it was not the best solution. After the sensor array was ready, I could assemble the device and test it. All the circuits were on breadboard as you can see on this video, but it was sufficient for the first prototype. In the next part you can see how I transferred the breadboards to actual PCBs.